Hello and welcome to the FT's ongoing series of business technology debates. After a brief break, we're back looking at the key issue of IT security. What does it mean and, more importantly, how can you ensure that your company is able to manage cyber risk effectively and efficiently? With me to discuss this and other issues are William Beer, who's director in PwC's Information and Cybersecurity Practice, Ray Stanton, who is Vice President of Professional Services at BT Global Services, and Brian Glick, Editor-in-Chief of Computer Weekly. Now, William, let me come to you first. Uh, we hear a lot about cyber threats and cyber risks, but what exactly does this mean for the average business? Well, that's an excellent question. First of all, I'm not quite sure what an average business is in this day and age. But I think the first problem is that there's a misconception that this is about IT. If we talk about cybersecurity, it's much, much broader than IT. It's about people, it's about processes, and then it's about technology. We find that when we speak to our clients, uh, a taxonomy-based approach is useful for engaging with clients and with businesses. And we tend to break it down into five buckets. The first one is financial crime. The second is around espionage. The third is around activism and hacktivism. The fourth is terrorism. And the fifth is warfare. And those five different categories tend to sum up the different areas of, of risk that each client is, or the different clients are suffering. Uh, Ray Williams has broken it down into, into five main areas. Is that something you recognize? And also, what can business do to prevent uh, this from happening? Yeah, it's a, it is a great uh, question. And it's also a great problem, because at the moment, there is this problem of trying to actually put your hands around it and say, what does it really mean? What does it really mean to me? And it, it does come down to probably around three principles. Understanding what the threats are to you as the CIOs, as the CTOs, as the business leaders. What does it really mean to us as, as businesses? The problems around many initiatives that are coming with it and the initiatives that are saying, what does cyber security, cyber risk mean? And then where do I invest? And we can come back to those points later on, but mm, it's about will. understanding what the risks are to you as a business. Brian, right, let's just kick that over to you. Uh, we've discussed the risks that are out there, but I mean, just how common are these uh, risks? I mean, just how, how often do companies find themselves under attack? Well, if, if, you, uh, if you talk to some of the companies who, who will monitor some of these things, you, you will talk to a lot of large companies in particular who will say that they are literally being attacked thousands of times a day. Now, that sounds very dramatic when you say that, but you know, the vast majority, 99.9999% of those, are automatically repelled by the, uh, the, the, the IT security protection systems that, that people have in place. Um, but there's, there's various different surveys and various different statistics that suggest that one way or another um, cyber, cyber security attacks is costing the UK economy uh, you know, into the into the billions of pounds in terms of in terms of damages from money lost, from information lost, from reputational damage, from uh, the cost of having to clear up after high-profile data breaches, for example. So, I think there's little doubt that it's a, a major problem that all businesses need to be aware of. So, the point is, I'm willing to come back to you. It, it's inevitable. It's costing the country billions of pounds. Is that the point in terms of you can't just have defences against these type of risks? You have to manage them. You have to expect them to happen. Exactly. What we're seeing with our clients is that the best approach now is to assume a state of compromise. So, in the past, it was all about locking things down, defending the fort, if you will. What we're doing with many of our clients is helping them to be more resilient and helping them to respond better to the attacks when it does occur. So, how are you doing that? It could be more, more, more exact. I mean, you're saying people uh, should be more resilient, but if I'm a CTO watching this uh, debate, how could I be more, more resilient? Well, one of the things that we find works very well at the beginning of the journey are simulation exercises. So we were actually in Davos earlier this year with our chairman doing a cyber simulation exercise. And what we did, we simulated an attack on an organization and showed how a fictitious group of uh, C-suite uh, directors would have responded to it and then offered guidance and insight about how to do it differently. So we find that those exercises, one, help raise awareness and set the tone from the top. Two, they pinpoint potential weaknesses in your incident response capability. And three, they, they set the tone, if you will, for the, the, for the complete organization. So that's interesting. It's, it's going to happen. People are already kind of creating models and, and, and simulations. Uh, Ray, is this something you recognize at BT as well? Yeah, um, but let me also add to both points. And it's critical to really try and bring a level of calm around of all of this. Because many of these things are not new. Many of these things are things that we've been seeing going on for a long, long time. The critical point is that the maturing of 
information security into being a boardroom issue. Also, the complexity of the drawing together of the different types of attacks. Now, there are new ones that we're seeing, you know, and we're seeing some very targeted attacks. But in general, a lot of them are the same. You know, we could get into the, the wares and wars, wherefores of things like distributed uh, denial of service tax. That's been going on for a long time. It's how we handle them which is critical. But, but isn't the point, just to come at this point, isn't the point that things change so quickly and that you, can, you, can't pre you, know, you can't prepare for too long in the future because who knows what's out there? And that's exactly the point. Okay, so understand what the base is and then make sure that you can act with agility. So it's really understanding where your borders are and what types of risks that you may put yourself into and how you manage those unknown risks. Uh, uh, the point is, I think, um, that the examples of LinkedIn and also Sony PlayStation, which have both been hacked recently, are really quite uh, prime examples, is you need to prepare, basically. Expect it. Correct. And knowing that something's going to happen. So having a clear strategy. You know, and the way that we operate is, for example, we have within our organization 18 risks that cover security, fraud, physical security, IT security, information security. And those all feed up into our overall group risk register, which is managed from the business. That then helps us make the better decisions of where we should invest. Well, Brian, again, just to throw that back to you, it's going to happen. It's going to cost your, money, your company um, um, money at some stage. I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? It's going to cost um, any preparation in terms of uh, whether you hire new people or add your financial costs uh, prevention. This is going to be a nightmare for many businesses, isn't it? It is one of these situations where you've, you've, you do, unfortunately, often do have to think about the case of what's the cost of not doing it. Um, you know, the, the, the Sony PlayStation hack that you mentioned there, you know, uh, Sony declared, I can't remember the final figure, but it was several hundred million dollars it cost them in, in the various costs of, of clearing up, of having to uh, keep their customers happy, of the, the, the reputational damage that it cost them, it, their share price dropped as a result of it. Um, so, you know, the, 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 these days for a big high profile company like that, the, 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 the cost of something happening to them is, is potentially very large. So what would you advise at that point? Uh, a mid-sized company to do? Well, yeah. I, think one of the, I think one of the important things you have to remember, everything that, that Ray and, and William have been saying is absolutely right in terms of the, the greater sophistication of threats and, and the, the, the broadening of risks that we get. But I think there's one thing that's important to remember, that uh, there was a survey I saw last year that said um, uh, 99, something like 99% of, of known virus attacks and, and, and malware attacks are based upon known threats. Um, so, in other words, what that means is that the, the most successful ways of, that, that hackers are getting into businesses, for example, are using, using things that we already know about. They're not new things. So, there, there is an absolute level of, for, for a medium-sized business, there's an absolute level of basics, of, of, of basic procedures you absolutely have to have in place. Simple things like making sure your antivirus is up to date, your systems, your, your systems are patched and so forth. There are some great free standards and uh, guidances available. And if you look for something from the Information Security Forum, this is an organization that publishes its standards of good practice, which allows you to look at the best approach, the best strategies to have, what could work for you, and that's for large enterprises and for small, medium business enter enterprises. Really good basics that allow you to say, I understand the baseline of how I'm going to operate I've got a very clear, simple strategy, and it might be that we just have got antivirus in place, mm -hmm. but it's very simple, and I know how I'm going to deal with things when an incident happens. And, and William, a final quick word for you. I think well. I would move the focus to the people. Sorry, I build on what my colleagues have just said, but I would look at how do you set the tone from the top to so make sure that the directors themselves are doing the right thing with regards to information security and roll out an awareness program that touches all the employees in the organization to make sure that people are locking their workstation, taking care of confidential documents, adhering to clean desk policy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time today, and I hope uh, you have also found that useful. For more details and other videos in the series, please go online and look at ft.com forward slash business hyphen technology hyphen debates. Thank you.